The challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you Husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Old Pop Reeman loved practical jokes. One evening in the Gold Horseshoe Bar in Dawson, Jim, the owner, protested violently when he discovered Pop sawing one of the chairs at a table where two other men were seated. Hey, you crazy old cook, quit sawing the legs off that chair. What do you think you're doing? Oh, keep your shirt on, Jim. I'll fix it for you tomorrow. We just want to have a little fun. Do you have to show up my chairs to have fun? Pop wants us to see how he fixes chairs so it doesn't fall apart when someone sits up. <laughs> oh, you'll get a good laugh out of this, Jim. Now, set up some more drinks for Bill and Pete here. All right, but you see that you fix that chair tomorrow. I ain't got enough of them as it is. <laughs> you don't seem to like your jokes too well, Pop. Oh, Jim's all right. He'll get a good laugh out of it when it happens. <coughs> hey, it's ready. Now we'll just let it stay right here at our table, and when someone comes in, we'll ask him to sit down with us. <laughs> Bill, this is a pretty fine bar. I don't know whether we better start one here in this town or not with all the competition. Well, we're going to start one anyway. Well, these places are better gold mines than you'd find anywhere. You don't get cold taking the pay dirt out of them. Oh, huh, you two going to open the bar, you say? We're planning to. Oh, shucks, I didn't know you could get the place to open one. This town ain't nothing but bars. Anyway, you'll have lots of competition. You'll get customers, don't worry. Uh, you won't get them away from Jim here. Eh? Why, this place is the most popular one in town. Customers have been coming here ever since the town began. And once they get used to a place, nothing outside of dynamite can get them to go anyplace else. There it is, your drinks, Bob. Uh, now, say, sit down and rest your feet a minute, Jim. Well, I am kind of tired. I... <laughs> Oh, jumping, Jupiter, you almost cut me that time. I clean forgot about that chair you always oh, sit up again. That would have been a good one if you'd have sat down and busted it after watching me fix it. That sure was close. Well, if I hadn't looked at your face just then, I'd have done it, Pop. You had to leave for looking in your eye that you have every time you play one of those jokes of yours. Ah, uh, doggone it, I sure wish you had. Hello there, Preston. Hi, hey, Preston. Oh, say, this Sergeant Preston. He's a Mountie, boys. Now, let's get him in here and sit down at this chair. Hope he can take a joke. Yeah, sure he can. He's all right. Oh, uh, Preston! Uh, hey, Sergeant! Come on over here. I want you to meet some new boys that have just come to town. Hello, Pop. Uh, this here is Bill Cummings and Pete Johnson. They're going to open up a new bar here in town. Hello, boys. How are you, Sergeant? How are you, Sergeant? Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> sit down, Sergeant. Right here in this chair with us. Why, uh, thanks, Pop. I'd be glad to sit at your table. But I think I'll trade hey, chairs with you. Hey, 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 you put me down, Sergeant. I'll put you down right on this chair you had fixed. Oh. <laughs> That's the best I ever seen. Pop got caught in his own trap. Well, good for you, Sergeant. Someone finally got him. <laughs> Here, let me help you out, Pop. There you go. Come. How'd you know that chair was fixed? Oh, I've seen your tricks before, Pop. Oh, well. And one look at that face of yours, and you invited me to sit down, and I knew something was up. <laughs> yeah, my face again. Well, I got to learn to control it. Oh, well, everybody enjoyed it anyway, except me. Now, let's pull up a, a good chair and continue to eat. Did, <clears throat> did I ever tell you about the time I... Put the pole cat in Jack Hunter's sleeping bag. <laughs> it was three weeks later, and Bill and Pete stood in their empty bar room, a glum look on their faces. We're going to lose all the money we put into this, Bill. I don't see why we sunk so much into it anyway. Well, we're stuck with it now. we got to make it pay. I ain't got another dime to put in it. I don't see why we don't get more customers. Just because they're all going over to the gold horseshoe, that's why. Place is packed every night. 
Even free drinks won't bring them here. Hey, boys! Well, we got one customer. There's old Pop Raymond. Hello, Pop. Hey, hey boys. Thought I'd look in and see how you was getting along. Oh, we're doing all right. Uh, shucks, it don't look like it. Well, this place is as empty as folks say my head is. We can't be busy all the time. We've hardly got it started. Well, as long as you've got plenty of capital, maybe you'll get some business by and by. But just like I said, you'll have to go some to get folks away from the gold horseshoe. It's crowded all the time. Thought up any new jokes lately, Pop? Uh, no. Everybody's on to most of them. Ain't had a speck of fun. You know, I heard of a good one once in Montreal. You did? <laughs> what was it? Well, I don't think you could get away with it, Pop. People know you play them all the time. Uh, now, there's lots of people I don't know very well, and a brand new trick would fool them. Well, sir, this one was done by sort of a crazy fella. Yeah? Didn't have much money, and he was always trying to bump drinks from the bar. <laughs> Well, finally, they wouldn't give him any more. Then one day, he came in with a stick of dynamite in his mouth like a cigar. <laughs> and when he got in, he lit it. <laughs> he lit the dynamite? And what happened? Well, sir, everybody fell over each other getting out of the place, even the bartenders. <laughs> they all ran as far away from there as they could get. <laughs> she blow? No, no. Everybody waited and nothing happened. Well, finally, someone got up nerve enough to peek in... And here was old Nick sitting on the bar, drinking out of every bottle he could get his hands on. <laughs> but, but where was the dynamite? Burning on the bar beside him. Oh. Well, <laughs> it was just a candle he'd fixed up with a fuse. But it looked just like dynamite. Hey. Believe you me, we sure felt silly coming back into that place. <laughs> well, now, that's what I call a, a good joke. <laughs> oh, suffering snakes, would I like to pull that one. <laughs> that would catch everybody in the place. <laughs> well... Nobody thinks you're that crazy, Pop. Well, now, you just don't know how far I'd go to pull a good joke like that. I can act crazy for a week or two, can't I? And you two boys could sort of tell folks I, I was getting a little bat. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want to get a reputation oh, for Oh, they'd all one. know he was pretending for the sake of playing the joke. Why, sure, that, that would be half the fun. Now, you boys help me fix that fuse on a candle, and I'll do the rest. Sure, we'll fix it up for you, Pop. I'll take a few days to act funny and get them all wondering, and then I'll do it. Fine. We'll get the stuff ready. I'll start right now. I'm going right over to the horseshoe barn start acting funny. So, so long, boys. Oh, this will be a good one. What's the idea, Bill? Since when you've been so interested in practical jokes? This is practical, all right. But it won't be a joke to the horseshoe bar. No? What do you mean? I mean we're going to wreck our competition. What? I still don't get it. When Pop goes in there smoking what he thinks is a candle, the joke's going to be on him. It's the last one he'll ever play. What? We're going to give Pop a real stick of dynamite instead of a fake one. But, but Bill, uh, well, that'll blow him to pieces. And it'll also blow the gold horseshoe bar to pieces. And we won't have to worry anymore about competition. But if someone finds How out... How can they? Pop won't be there to tell him who thought of it. And if he's going to act crazy, well... <laughs> It all fits in, see? <laughs> hey, look at Pop over there. What do you think he's doing? Looks looks as if he's picking flowers. Only there ain't no flowers. What you doing, Pop? Uh, uh, just carrying up a few of these here daisies. I make good butter with them. Daisies? Butter. And sometimes I feed them to my ostrich. Ostrich? He's going for me. <laughs> hey, Sergeant. Hmm? Look at Pop coming down the street. <laughs> He's got his parka on backwards and carrying his cab. Well, why is he doing that funny dance? Is he drunk? No, he never touches a drop anymore. But everybody says he's crazy as a loon. Oh, he can't be out of his mind. Hello there, Pop. Uh, hello, Colonel. Uh, how's Prince? Ah, uh, Pop, you know it's Sergeant. The dog's name is King. <laughs> why don't you put your cap on, Pop? It's cold. I have to keep my eggs warm. Your eggs? See, in my cap. Leaping catfish. He's got fried eggs in his cabin. Hey, hey, goodbye yeah. now. Get off the track or that train won't hit you. Well, I'll be... He's completely off his beam. No, that's an act. 
Old Pop's up to something again. The following evening, in the Gold Horseshoe Bar, there was the usual crowd of merrymakers. As Sergeant Preston stood talking to Jim, the owner, with King at his side, Pop Raymond came in. He wore a queer peaked hat, his parker was worn with the back in front, and in his hand was a long stick that resembled a candle. He put it into his mouth at a jaunty angle as if it was a large cigar. Here comes Goofy old Pop again. <laughs> hello, boys. Hello. There it is, Pop. Look, he's acting crazier than ever. What's that in his mouth? Uh, it looks like a stick. Hey, uh, that ain't dynamite, is it? I got a new kind of cigar, boys. I found it in the dynamite box. Hey, he's got a stick of dynamite. Look out. Well, I have to light it first. Then I'll give you all a pop. Hey, look out. Let me out of here. He's lighting the fuse. Get out of my way. Sergeant Preston, he's going to blow us up. All right, Pop. We know it's a joke. Oh, damn you, Preston. <laughs> I'm going to hit you over the head with this. You never... Hey, 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 hey go on. Catch that stick. I got it. Back, King. Pop wasn't trying to hurt me. There, the fuse is out. Lucky I caught that candle, Pop. You might have burned King. He didn't hurt you, did he? Nobody done this scared me to death. I forgot all about him. Guess he didn't know I was only fooling. <laughs> he thought you were really going to hit Preston with that candle. <laughs> this time I play a joke, I'm going to wait till you're out of town, Preston. What? I... Wait. What's the matter? What's wrong, Sergeant? You look scared. I am scared. We've been playing catch with a real stick of dynamite. This isn't a candle. Uh, what? You mean it's real? It's a big stick of dynamite with a regular cap and fuse on it. No. Oh. And I had it in my mouth and was pretending to smoke. Oh. Now, sit in this chair, Pop. Your knees are giving away. My knees are a little wobbly, too. A few more seconds and we'd all have been blown to bits. Pop, you'd better tell us something about this joke of yours. Well, it wasn't my idea. It was Pete and Bill. You mean the men who started that new bar down the street? Yeah, they they fixed it for me. They, they said it was... Just a candle made to look like oh, dynamite. Well, them dirty skunks, they were trying to wreck my bar. I'm going over there and turn them inside out. Wait a minute, Jim. This wasn't just a plan to wreck the gold horseshoe. It was attempted murder. I'll take care of Pete and Bill. Come on, King. Bill, something must have gone wrong. We could have heard the explosion. We'll hear it. Crazy old fool probably just waved it in their faces and scared them out. Most likely waiting till they come back in again before he lights it. Figure he can scare them twice. Well, I don't like it. Listen. Did you hear something at the back door? Oh, calm down. You're just nervous. Well, I'm getting my park on, and if anyone comes in, I'm getting out fast. Why, well, you're crazy. If we run away now, they'll suspect us, and we got... Oh, What? Hi, Sergeant Preston. Lots behind that bar, Bill. You're what, under arrest. What do you mean? I wouldn't go out that back door if I were you, Pete. Oh, I was. Get him, King. Take him All right, Bill. Get back there with him. Oh, I don't know what this is all about. Did, did you get him, Sergeant? Yes, Pop. Oh. I got one and King got the other. All right, King. Back. Get up, Pete. Your scheme didn't work out. You're both under arrest. Keep this dog away from me. If that dog hadn't jumped me when he did... We wouldn't even be here to arrest you weasels. That's right, Bob. And maybe this has cured you of practical joking. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>